I missed out on posting this video last week due to some personal issues, but the 7-star Terra Ice Empoleon Raid returns tonight, so let's talk about it. Starting above all else with its ability Competitive. Competitive raises its special attack by two stages every time its stats go down, so any attempt to lower its defenses or its attack power will instead make it stronger. This is especially bad if you don't have a full team of four, as not only do three of the NPC mons that come to help you in terror raids have Intimidate, but a bunch of the other ones have other moves that specifically lower stats. So if you're trying to do this without a full team, or heaven forbid on your own, you're gonna have a problem because it's almost certainly gonna have the ability triggered and its attack power is gonna get a lot higher. Anyways, moving right on to its moveset. With a much simpler moveset than I was actually expecting it to end up having, we start with Surf. The strongest water type attack it brought to this raid, and quite possibly the least defensive move in its set. Leaning into its natural steel typing, it also comes with Flash Cannon, a relatively strong special attacking steel type move that has a 10% chance to lower your special defense. I mean, the rest of Empoleon's attacks are just gonna hit you that much harder. For its main Ice Stab, it has Ice Beam, which quite frankly is the most expected move in this slot, but the freezes, in my experience, have not been fun. Rounding out its regular attack set, it also comes with Grass Knot, which is the only one of its moves that I wasn't actually expecting. But hey, when water types resist basically all of its best moves, I understand. And as for the additional move set that it only uses as scripted actions, it's also coming with Snowscape to boost its defense, and Blizzard to hit every single target on the field at 100% accuracy because Snowscape makes it 100% accurate. It's also coming with Iron Defense, though it only uses it once, so it's realistically not that big of a deal. Which means outside of its ability, it only has one move that can boost its own stats. But because of its ability, unless you get creative, you can't lower them either. Anyways, as always, before we get into tactics, let's talk about the scripted actions. Starting off the raid, before you get a chance to do anything, Empoleon will use Snowscape to set up the snow, and immediately follow up with Blizzard to hit your entire team. Meaning that if you ended up with a Pokemon with Intimidate on your team, it already got a big boosted damage attack off on your whole team before you even had a chance to do anything about it. Next up, in a fairly common timestamp for a Terror Raid, the shield will go up when there's either 80% of the timer remaining, or Empoleon has 80% of its HP left. This means if you get in enough damage right up front, the shield will go up pretty quickly, but even if you try and stall it out and get a bunch of utility moves in up front, it'll still go up after the first few turns, so keep that in mind. With about 65% of its HP remaining, Empoleon will use Iron Defense. This means once the shield goes down, its defense will be higher than it was before, but hopefully you're boosted enough at this point to not have to care. And for the pretty standard stat resets, Empoleon will reset its own stats at 50% HP, which means about the same time the shield goes down, it will reset any stat debuffs you might have managed to get on it. As for resetting your team's stats, it does it twice. It'll do it the first time when it has about 80% HP remaining, means if you get a good couple hits in up front, it will immediately reset your stats. However, it will also then do it again when there's 50% of the timer remaining. Which, if your strategy involved a lot of setting up, chances are both of these could happen at the exact same time. So, let's talk tactics. Up front, the major concern is obviously the competitive ability. A lot of potential terror raid strategies involve lowering the terror boss's stats. So if you can't do that, that already eliminates a lot of potential strategies. In that case, it's probably a good idea to try and get rid of that ability completely. And something like Skill Swap, Simple Beam, or even Worry Seed could work wonders here. Changing the ability to something else so you can actually lower its stats without any repercussions. As for selecting your typing, the two best types to utilize here is Fighting and Steel. Rock and Fire are also super effective against Ice, but both of those are super weak to Surf. Whereas Fighting and Steel types have no real concerns here because of its moveset. As such, any Pokémon that is Steel or Fighting type is probably a good pick here, so long as its secondary typing isn't weak to anything it has. And with that one use of Iron Defense, as well as Snowscape raising its defense for the first bunch of turns of the raid, Special Attackers might be for the best. But if you're using Flash Cannon to do super effective damage, make sure you do something about the ability first, as that 10% chance to lower Empoleon's Special Defense is still a chance to set off the competitive ability, which could rather easily mess over your whole team. And since Empoleon can still dish out some damage, even though it can't boost its special attack outside of its ability, a Pokémon with a lot of special defense is a great asset here. Or even just adding an Assault Vest to a purely offensive Mon could work wonders here. But yeah, aside from that, the raid is pretty straightforward. You just have to worry about competitive going off and raising its stats, but if you don't have to worry about that, you're pretty good. And now finally what I know most of you have been waiting for, my builds for taking on the 7-star Ice Terra Empoleon raid. 
Starting off our raid build, we have the incredibly overused Iron Hands. This thing's just an absolute beast in most scenarios. This is pretty well my standard Fighting Terra Iron Hands build at this point. With Focus Energy to boost its crit rate, so it has a chance to crit even if it's not doing any damage up front. Belly Drum to maximize its damage, and Drain Punch to heal itself while it's doing super effective damage. It's a pretty straightforward build, so long as you have some support behind you. And just as an added bonus, I threw Sword Stance on it this time. So if you don't think Belly Drum can go off because of the amount of damage you're taking, you can at least get a plus two with Sword Stance in. As usual, Iron Hands is going to come in clutch here and do a lot of damage. On the support side of things, and god I'm tired of saying it, Blissey. Any regular to this channel already knows, if the Terra Boss is a special attacker, Blissey is the support of choice. With its massive HP and special defense pool, as well as Light Scream, Life Do, and Helping Hand, Blissey is already a god tier support Pokémon. Add in the healer ability, giving the chance to heal any of its teammates of any status effect at the end of its turn, and it's wonderfully useful in most scenarios. And just in case there's no reason to use a support move that turn, Seismic Toss. Because why not? On a slightly different support note, we also have Bronzong! With Light Screen to half the incoming damage from Empoleon and Helping Hand to boost its teammates' attack power, Bronzong also comes equipped with Skill Swap to get rid of competitive in the first place which you should use immediately. Also, Bronzong has a not negligible amount of attack power in this scenario, so it's also packing Flash Cannon to deal super effective damage. Bronzong is a wonderful support for this raid, if not a little lacking in the case of heals. And now for a Pokémon I haven't featured on this before, Berserker! Berserker might seem like a weird inclusion on this, but it actually makes a fair amount of sense. So the main reason for its inclusion is its Steely Spirit ability. Steely Spirit boosts the power of all steel attacks used by itself and its allies by 1.5 times. Meaning if you set this thing up next to a bunch of steel types, it's going to boost the damage overall. But aside from that, it's also coming rocking Sword Stance to boost its damage and Iron Head for its main offense. But as an added bonus, it also comes with Metal Burst. Because Berserker's slower than Empoleon, if Empoleon has a couple of boosts on it, Berserker will take an attack and Metal Burst will return 150% of the damage. And it's Steel-type, so it'll be super effective. And with the Shell Bell, you'll heal from that. So as long as you survive the initial hit, you're going to be doing good damage and fully healing from it. And as an added bonus, I put Helping Hand here, because you're already boosting your allies' damage. Might as well go for extra. Back to Pokémon we've featured on this channel before. Goldengo. Goldengo's rocking light screen, so it can set it up if nobody else can to half the incoming damage. And then Nasty Plot to boost its damage and make it rain for a big hit. Make it rain does lower Goldengo's special attack every time it uses it, though, so make sure to follow up with a couple of Nasty Plots occasionally to boost the damage back up. Now, the one downside of Goldengo is its good as gold ability does mean it cannot receive any support from other Pokemon on its team. But that's why I put Recover on this build. So it can heal itself instead of relying on someone else to do it. And because Goldengo's a special attacker, it doesn't have to worry about all the defense boosts that Empoleon gets. And for another first time inclusion on this channel, Malamar. Now, I originally tried testing this out as a solo build, but it didn't quite have enough offensive power to finish off the raid itself. But it's still a pretty solid Pokemon to use on a team, with Light Screen to half the incoming damage if no one else can do it, and Super Power as its main attack and the way to boost its stats. With the contrary ability, any stat down becomes a stat up, which means superpower lowering your attack power every time you use it is instead boosting it and doing increasing fighting type damage, which is super effective here. Also, since we're running this Terra fighting, I've added Terra Blast since it really doesn't have any other good attacks to use, giving it another really strong fighting type attack to use instead of wasting superpower when you're not getting boosts. But the most fun thing to do with this build is Topsy Turvy. Topsy Turvy does not trigger competitive. So if Empoleon's sitting at a plus four special attack because of your teammates' mess ups, now it's negative four. As I said though, sometimes your random teammates aren't gonna be that good. They're not gonna realize that competitive is gonna screw them over if they lower its stats. Sometimes it's just easier to do it yourself. So if you wanna solo the seven star Empoleon without any help, round of applause for the first time on this channel, Grumpig. Grumpig is a decent special attacker with a fair amount of special bulk, but the real bonus here is the Thick Fat ability, making it so that all of Empoleon's ice moves are only hitting for half damage. Which means Grumpig can tank the Blizzard at the beginning of the raid with no issue. The strategy is simple. Immediately as the raid starts, use Simple Beam. Simple Beam will immediately replace Empoleon's competitive ability with Simple, which means it is now subject to stat downs. Which means you can immediately start hitting Snarl to lower its special attack. 
Now, in most cases, you only have to do this three times to get the proper effect, but if you had an Intimidate Mon on your team, you might want to do this a few more times than that. Once you got off all the Snarls you need, go Terra Steel and start using Flash Cannon until it resets your stats. And then depending on how much time you have before the timer drops to 50%, get in a couple of Nasty Plots before you start attacking with more Flash Cannon. When the timer gets down to 50%, drop a couple more Nasty Plots and then go to town with the Flash Cannon once again. And the Empoleon should just go down without issue. Thank you for watching this raid guide video. If you like my terror raid content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel and it really helps me get this out there. And if you ever need help with the 7 Star Terror Raid, you can drop by my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash IXI Studios, where I'm live every Thursday night when these come out at 8.30 p.m. EST, providing my raid builds for the raid for anybody to use, and offering assistance for anyone in the chat who needs some help. So if you're looking to get the next 7 Star Terror Raid boss, look me up and make sure to drop by. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Peace.